Governor Matt Bevin is getting ready to unveil his budget for Kentucky, and some agencies are bracing for bad news. A Lexington arts community is planning an emergency meeting. They're fearful the governor's budget won't include money for them. Also, the man who runs the city of Lexington has his sights set on a higher office. Mayor Jim Gray's decision to run for U.S. Senate now at four. It is a much colder day across central and eastern Kentucky, but the seven-day forecast shows you that's not a sign of things to come. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. The milder air has helped melt a lot of the snow, but temperatures are dropping fast. Here's a live look at downtown Lexington, where it's a dreary and cool afternoon. After highs in the mid-40s yesterday, temperatures have taken a big drop. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here, and Chris, quite a difference from 24 hours ago. Yeah, roughly 10 to 13 degree difference showing up across central and eastern Kentucky, Jennifer, from compared to this same point yesterday. The numbers are in the 30s. 10 degrees colder right on the button in Lexington. Look at Richmond and Mount Sterling Moorhead. 13 degrees colder than 4 o'clock yesterday. Those numbers are down into the mid 30s. 36 popular, 35, 34 here into the Somerset area. Throw the winds into the mix. Now we're talking about upper 20s to around 30 for the wind chill. 26 is what it feels like into far northern Kentucky across the Covington area. That front we were tracking yesterday to our north and northwest. Now off to the southeast of us. That cold northwesterly wind continues continues to knock our thermometers down and look what else is starting to take place a little bit of light rain across eastern kentucky back edge of that as expected switching over to a period of a few snow flurries showing up across parts of central Kentucky. Not a huge, huge deal, but again, if you're out and about this evening, don't be surprised if we don't squeeze out a snow flurry or two. But overall, those flakes are not expected to impact traffic. That is certainly uh, some good news. When I come back in a few minutes, we'll focus on a forecast that has a big surge in your thermometer. And Jennifer, that may coincide with the weekend forecast in 15 minutes. Lots of changes to come. Thank you, Chris. After weeks of speculation, Lexington Mayor Jim Gray makes it official. He is running for the U.S. Senate seat, currently held by Republican Dr. Rand Paul. Gray filed with the Secretary of State's office this morning. He says he wants to help fix a Washington that is broken. He said Senator Paul is not focusing enough on Kentuckians back home. Senator has a reputation for filibusters. Uh, he has a reputation for spending a lot of time in other places. Uh, running for president. Uh, I think that we need a senator who's focused on Kentuckians and the problems and the challenges that Kentuckians have right here at home. Senator Rand Paul's campaign staff sent a statement this afternoon saying he works hard for Kentucky with a 94% voting attendance record in the Senate. Gray faces five other candidates in the Democratic primary. We have that full list on WKYT.com, and we'll have more from Jim Gray on WKYT News at 5. Tonight, Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin will unveil his two-year state spending plan. The governor is already calling for the state to generate more money to fix shortfalls in public retirement systems, but he says he has no plans to raise taxes. WKYT's Kristen Kennedy has a preview. Governor Matt Bevin ran on a campaign of cutting costs and fixing a multi-billion dollar pension shortfall. And he's expected to address those issues this evening. The governor told the Associated Press he's going to fix the multi-billion dollar pension shortfall without raising taxes and without borrowing money. Lex Arts president and CEO Nan Plummer hopes it's not at the expense of organizations like hers. Last year, LexArts received more than $20,000 in state funding, and those are funds that go toward half a dozen programs. They go to small organizations and large ones like LexArts, like the Lexington Philharmonic, the Lexington Art League here in our own city. Uh, and they do a lot of things besides give money away, although that's a really important part of their work. The Kentucky Crafted Market, Governor's Arts Awards, very important programs that keep the arts front and center for both consumers uh, and policymakers. LexArts is so worried that they're not going to receive the funding they expect that they have organized an emergency meeting. The governor hasn't yet said what he will and won't cut. We should find that out this evening. In Frankfurt, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. 
Governor Bevin's budget address begins at 7 tonight. We'll have a recap and reaction on WKYT News at 11. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick is in the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Jennifer. Owners of a Southern Kentucky business say they will have to rebuild after snow caused their manufacturing facility to cave in. It happened at the Southgate Company on Kentucky 49 in Casey County. The owner believes the snow drifted to one area toward the middle, causing it to bring the entire structure down. The building is 40,000 square feet and worth more than a half million dollars. The owner says not only the building, but a lot of what was inside was damaged or destroyed. It just destroyed everything. All the, a lot of the tools, the forklifts, uh, where the building came down on it, where they was on the inside. The owner says this was their only, their main manufacturing facility, but says they will rebuild. He believes it will take six months to get everything back in order. We'll have much more from Casey County ahead on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. The Sheriff's Department in Montgomery County is investigating after someone used some phony money at a restaurant. A $100 bill labeled for motion picture use only was used at a subway in Camargo. The Sheriff's Department says it's identical to movie money that was recently used in Georgetown, and they're now working with Georgetown police. The manager of the subway says he's looking at surveillance video to see if they can identify the person who used the fake money. We'll have a report from Montgomery County on WKYT News coming up at 5.30. Fayette County school leaders are debating the controversial issue of charter schools to lawmakers in Frankfurt. The debate over charter schools comes down to one question, will they help or hurt Kentucky? Outside organizations run charter schools, which are publicly funded and open to anyone. They do not have to follow some of the rules that apply to district schools, like class size requirements and traditional school calendars. Critics say that charter schools pull tax dollars away from public schools. They also worry that the privatization of charter schools puts profit ahead of pupils. You'll hear from researchers of charter schools ahead on WKYT News at 4.30. Pretty busy day. That's a look at some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. It sure is. Thank you, Sam. Now to stories making headlines across the nation at four. There's a dramatic new warning about the danger posed by one of the escapees in a Southern California jailbreak. An Orange County prosecutor is quoted as saying they let Hannibal Lecter out. Maria Villarreal is at the Orange County Central Jail with new charges as the manhunt intensifies. We know somebody out there knows something. The Orange County Sheriff's Department repeatedly asked the public for help Monday. And sent a message to the Vietnamese community. It is extremely important for them to reach out to us, let us know where they're at, because they're extremely armed and dangerous. 20 year old Jonathan Tu, who is facing murder charges, is linked to a Vietnamese gang. Bak Duong is also thought to have gang ties. The 43 year old was being held on attempted murder charges. 37 year old Hussein Nayiri is accused of kidnapping and torture. In 2012, Nairi, along with an accomplice, allegedly tortured a man with fire. I'm scared. People who live in the community near the jail are frightened. These people are that bad. How did they get out of jail? He is incredibly violent. Orange County prosecutor Heather Brown says Nairi's trial is set for next month. The acts that he committed are nothing short of diabolical. Authorities believe the men escaped from the Central Men's Jail Friday morning. The escapees cut their way through a steel screen and entered the building's plumbing tunnels. Law enforcement says the group rappelled off the roof down nearly five floors using a makeshift rope made of linens. Investigators are trying to figure out how they got a hold of the tools they used in their escape and if someone was helping them. Right now, the Sheriff's Department does confirm no one from their office is on leave or suspended with pay. Mireya Villarreal, CBS News, Los Angeles. The new felony charges could put the men in federal prison for up to a combined 15 years. Wall Street rebounds as oil prices jump 6% today. The Dow had its best one-day point gain since December 4th, up 282 points to 16,167. The Nasdaq added 49. The next time you hit up the ATM instead of your wallet, you may only need your phone. J.P. Morgan Chase is rolling out new cash machines that don't need an ATM card, triple the withdrawal limit to $3,000, and give bills other than 20s. The machines are called e-ATMs. Customers log into their accounts with an app.
Americans with the urge to splurge will be spending that cash. A new study from CreditCards.com finds more than half of the U.S. have spent more than $100 on an impulse buy or something they didn't need. 20% have spent more than $1,000. Amazon's premium service is more popular than ever before. A new study finds nearly half of U.S. households have Amazon Prime. The study estimates the number of Amazon Prime memberships in the U.S. jumped 35% last year to 54 million. Amazon doesn't disclose how many Prime members it has, but it has previously said it's in the tens of millions. Memberships cost $99 a year and come with free two-day or overnight shipping on many items, as well as access to Amazon streaming videos. McDonald's says it's making a comeback. The fast food giant credits the all-day breakfast for a big jump in sales. As Vanita Nair found out, the fast food giant has other changes in store. No way. Save a breakfast anytime you like. More than three months after McDonald's made breakfast an all-day affair. All-day breakfast so good. The move appears to be satisfying customer cravings and Wall Street's appetite for profits. The fast food giant reported on Monday that U.S. same-store sales jumped nearly 6% in the fourth quarter of 2015. And this is an organization that is closing in on serving something like 70 million people a day. It is a battleship, and turning a battleship is very, very hard. So you have to give them credit for at least some of the speed at which they have dealt with these issues. Those issues have included criticism for the restaurant's supersized menu and allegations of using unhealthy and unethically raised ingredients, facing stiff competition from more premium chains like Shake Shack and Chipotle. Since CEO Steve Easterbrook took over McDonald's in March, the company has become more transparent about ingredients, simplified its menu, and beefed up how customers can use it. There's one and there's two. Rolling out a revamped value menu, a digital app to help find deals, and kiosks that let you create your own burgers. The idea of customization suggests that the food is fresher. While overall customer satisfaction is improving, the number of people who actually visit McDonald's is down, and that is why the company is trying out a couple of new dishes. For example, in Ohio, in select stores, you can try out mac and cheese, and in Texas, again, in select stores, they will be sampling sweet potato fries. Vanita Nyer, CBS News, New York. It's time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. You probably have hundreds or even thousands of friends on Facebook, but a new study finds many of those Facebook friends don't really like you. The study shows on average only four of those Facebook friends are considered part of your clique and would really be there for you in a time of crisis. The study also finds the average person can count just 13 people as close friends. The University of Oxford study found although social networks help you keep up with your acquaintances, they don't necessarily expand your number of close friendships. Breast cancer survivors may be more vulnerable to common viruses and bacterial infections. Researchers in England found that chemotherapy weakens the immune system of breast cancer patients for at least nine months after treatment. Well, if you're married, how often do you tell your spouse you love them? Busy schedules, work, children, chores, they can all get in the way. Instead of waiting until Valentine's Day, today is a good day to tell them how much you appreciate them. It's National Spouses Day.